Uh, good morning, everybody. This is Yoga with Thea. Here's a picture of me on my uh, terrace in Puerto Varda overlooking Banderas Bay. And now I'm going to actually stop sharing that picture and put Kathy in the spotlight. She's going to be our model for today's class. There she is waving. Whoops. And I'm going to say also, now that I've said hello, that um, today is May 14th, 2020. This is my regular online yoga with Thea. I'm going to mute everybody, um, but if you want to say something, you can unmute yourself or you can put something in the chat box. Or you can raise your hand in the participants area. So one of the benefits of this yoga class and probably many others that are online now is you get to both become practice yoga and practice Zoom. <laughs> Increase your Zoom skills. We're going to start the way we always do, lying on the floor, supine. Just starting to notice the breath. You may want to put your head on a stack of washcloths, just something comfortable so that you're not hyperextending the, uh, the back of your cervical spine. And just take some, some breaths and notice some breaths and allow yourself to come into the room. Your knees are bent, feet on the floor. We're going to do some more breathing later. Alternate. I'm going to uh, teach alternate nostril breathing today, but it's a seat. I'm going to teach it in a seated position. The next thing I'd like you to do is do a vagus nerve reset. Bring your hands behind your head, interlace your fingers, create a cup or a little cradle for your occipital ridge, the base of your skull. And from here, without moving anything else, shift your eyeballs to the right. Your eyes can be open or closed. And once you've done that, just wait here for an involuntary yawn, sigh, swallow, or gulp. If you're new to this exercise, it may not happen today. Maybe it'll happen another day when you keep practicing this. This is a really nice way to reset the vagus nerve into the um, parasympathetic relaxed state. So instead of fleeing or fighting, we'll, we'll come, into, come into a state where our body is open to healing and restoring. Just come on back to the center, if you haven't already, and shift your eyeballs to the left. And wait for a swallow, yawn, sigh, or gulp. This is just an indication that you've flipped the switch on your vagus nerve, using the nerves in your eyeball, actually, to do that. Come on back and do this two more times for yourself. This vagus nerve reset is a, an exercise I um, borrowed from Stephen uh, Rosenberg, uh, who wrote a book called Accessing the Power of the Vagus Nerve.
And when you finish your last set, leave your arms where they are. We're going to practice head ramping. So pressing the base of your skull, the bottom of the base of your skull on the back, press that into your cupped hands, your interlaced fingers. Press and then hold and then release and press again. Keep breathing while you're doing this. Always breathing and then moving here. Creating some resistance as you press the back of your skull, the base of the back of your skull into, the, into your hands and into the floor. Your chin and nose will drop, but not because you, I told you to drop your chin and no, your nose. It's because I told you to press your occipital ridge into your hands. And that's an important distinction. This is good for posture. It's good for text neck or from all the rounding. When your chin and your head comes forward in front of your shoulders because you've been on the computer or using your uh, cell phone, this can counteract that and correct it. Create strength and stability in the, in the cervical spine. And you could do it seated or standing as well. And then finish up. Put a sponge ball under your head if you have one at the same place at the occipital ridge. We're just going to do um, what's called C1 glide. So gliding the um, base of the skull over the, the first cervical vertebra. So this is a nod. When you go forward, you're about 10 degrees forward, then about 10 degrees back. I love doing this on the sponge ball. If you don't have a sponge ball, you can use uh, almost anything else. A brick's going to be very hard, but you're still going to, you need something to create some structure for yourself. So it could be a stack, a blanket, or a stack of washcloths. Let me say that if you want me to look at you, I'm not promising totally that I will, but if you do, make sure that your camera is on and that your body is in, in full view on the camera. So just gliding back and forth. This is an important movement for, for releasing the neck and shoulders. And then come back to neutral and just look left and right, just slowly left and right, just because we can, because we're here. There's a whole series, um, neck and jaw series, that we could do if, well, I usually do it with these um, therapy balls, yoga tune-up therapy balls, if people are, I ha are they, they're in, those are included in my list of props that I recommend. So once we get a bunch, a core of people who are coming and, and have this, that prop, there's a, a neck and jaw series that's very nice that we can do on the therapy balls. But right now, this works too. Come on back. We're going to take your therapy ball away and put your wash claws back oh, underneath your skull. We're going to do a hypo, two hypopressives. Hypopressives are a, um, a practice for pelvic floor and core work that was developed about 10 or 15 years ago in Spain um, when some physical therapists there noticed that crunches 
we're actually creating prolapse and also um, incontinence. So this is, this is a practice that reverses that. It, it brings all the organs back up to where they used to be before they start, gravity started pushing them down. Gravity and crunches. So that's enough said on that. <laughs> um, we're going to do a bridge. So your hands are on the floor. We're going we're to come up into a bridge after three breaths. And after the third breath, holding your breath and then coming up into a bridge. And then we'll add on overhead arms for the second time we do it. So I'm going to count three breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Hold your breath out. No breath. Lift your hips into a bridge. One, two, three, four. No breath. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale and then exhale and come back down. So you don't have to do the full 10. If you're just starting to do this, you might not only be, be able to hold your breath for five counts, and that's OK, too. Listen to your own body. Your own body is your best teacher. I'm just a guide. Take an in, three breaths. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. No breath. Lift your hips up. Bring your arms overhead by your ears at the same time as you lift your hips up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Inhale. Oops, Kathy's in a hurry to get down. <laughs> Inhale and drop your hips and bring your arms down. Um, I think that's all we'll do with that. Uh, there's a whole hypopressive practice, and some of it's on YouTube. I haven't found the YouTubes that easily, easily to, easy to access. There's a lot of talking and not much moving on some on the YouTubes I've found, but it's out there. Hypopressives, and it's good for incontinence and prolapse and a lot of other things along the front of the body, organs and muscles and on the front of the body. So go, we're going to go ahead and extend your legs. We're going to do a little bit of hip work. Then we're going to come up to floor seated and do some other work, including ujjayi breath. Extend your legs. Spread the legs a little bit. Starting on the left, actually bring your, uh, on the right, bring your right leg back straight out in front of you and the left leg out to give the, the right leg a little room there. So, so the, the right leg is straight in front of you along the mat. You're just going to internally and externally rotate uh, the leg at the hip joint. So try to make this a movement that happens at the head where the head of the femur meets the acetabulum, the little indent in the, in the pelvis or in the hip. So you're going to internally rotate, so go toward the center, and then away from center, externally rotate. And just do that about six to ten times. And try not to move anything else in your body, not your other leg, not your torso. Make this a movement that is isolated at the hip, internal and external rotation. And make sure that it's not a movement of the ankle. The ankle moves because the hip moves, but, but this is a, a hip joint movement. 
then just switch to the other side. Yeah, good. That's good. So try to keep your pelvis uh, stable and quiet and just move and think about what's happening here. The, the ball or the head of the femur is, is, ro is moving internally and externally in the socket, hip socket. And watch, be aware of your breath and aware of your movement. I like this move because you can do it as you're waking up <laughs> while you're in bed. Pure movements like this actually really help us uh, to move freely in the hips. Go ahead and stop this movement and bring your right leg up towards your face, straight up, straight legged and hold on behind the thigh, or if you can't reach your thigh, hold on with a strap. Put a strap behind your thigh. We're gonna do a resistance hamstring stretch. So resistance, I, I teach, I'm certified to teach, and I teach um, a resistance practice, stretching practice called Kihara. You're always moving and always resisting. So Kathy's gonna move her thigh away from her face while her hand res hands resist that movement. And then she's gonna go back and forth. So always resisting and always moving. So when the hand is winning, the, the, the thigh is resisting the movement of the hand. When the thigh is winning, the hand is resisting the movement of the thigh. Back and forth. You go. Just knowing, by the way, for all the lower back issue people, that sometimes one of the problems with lower backs is that we have tight hamstrings. So this is a movement that might be able to help you with your lower back. A lot of the movements I do here are corrective, curative, therapeutic movements. And I'm hoping to address some of the issues that I know I have and some of my students have. So a couple more times and then switch to the other side. This is a resistance stretch. The nice thing about Kihara, because of the way it's set up, is that it stretches a muscle at the belly of the muscle rather than at the insertion or the attachment. So feel the resistance but it's not, it's not a war, so you, it shouldn't feel like way too much. It's more like a, a dance between the two directions. When you're coming forward, that's stretching the hamstring, medial hamstring, and when you're coming back, it's strengthening. The last one we're gonna do in this set, and I try to teach in triplets, sets of three, so that maybe you can remember them, because one of the ways the, the learn, our brain works is that it, it grabs onto chunks of information. So if I ever say, we just finished a triplet, that was just three movements, that maybe you will, the brain will catch, catch on to and hold on to so, for your home practice. So we're gonna do figure four. Kathy's gonna take her right leg forward, knee forward, and then cross the ankle in front of the left knee, holding on to the left thigh behind the knee with both hands, and pressing into the, with the right elbow, bending the right elbow and the left elbow actually, but bending the right elbow to press into the right knee. And this is, and you rock, and, here. So you rock from this position, your thigh, your left thigh is going back and forth because of the, because you're bending your elbows. 
And remember, this is a resistance stretch. Some of the resistance happens when you bend your elbow, your right elbow into your right thigh. This is great for stretching the glute muscles and piriformis and the SI joint. This is great for, for backs, lower backs, um, until it isn't. So always remember, listen to your own body. And if this doesn't feel right for you, don't do it. Or if you don't, want it, if, you know, you can make your movement smaller, slower. So the body is always telling us, giving us traffic lights. Green is go, yellow is caution, and red is stop. <laughs> so listen to those lights. And finish up that side, except for don't go, don't go out of your figure four yet. Go ahead and drop your left foot, Kathy. Take off your sock or socks, because I, I want to do something here just because we can. Um, so press, let's see how am I going to say this. Press, put your hand, the side of your left hand, on the side of your right big toe. This is a little uh, isometric thing too, and press the big toe into the hand. So the big toe is going to spread away from the, the other toes into your hand. Does that make sense? So you're pressing it, so you're pressing it not in towards the toes, other toes, you're pressing away from the other toes into your hand. So it's not a pull. I mean, you could pull, you can pull on it for a minute too to so that's, that's where you're trying to get it, to pull. You're gonna, trying to get it to pull away from you. But the way you're going to do that is isometrically. You're going to have it press, put your hand there, and then press into, press the toe into your hand. So don't press it away, Kathy. So keep your hand still. So it's more like, pre now press it into your hand. So press. So how, how are people, how are, are people, I'm going to unmute you all so because I'm just, I may not be, to, how are, pe are people feeling this? And I'll tell you why to do it in a minute. Socks should come off, although I guess, Leslie, if you can't, can't bear to take your socks off, don't. This is a movement, a lot of people, um, as we get older, and for any number of reasons, get bunions. This is an anti-bunion program, which is why I'm adding it here. So even, and this, you can either prevent bunions or you can start to reverse bunions. If you start to activate, there is a, 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 a muscle that runs along the side of the foot. It's not the plantar fascia, uh, plantar muscle that runs along the arch that we, we exercise with short foot, which we may do later today. This is right along the side of the foot. So I want to see what Leslie says. Oh, how are people doing on this? Can people, can you give me feedback? I really need to know. Can people find that muscle in, that, in the foot, on the edge of the foot? It's on the inner edge of the foot, coming down from the big toe. When you press... Put your hand on the big toe and press into that mu into the hand. You should activate that muscle. <laughs> oh, I think I have it. Okay. Does that make sense? Well, I think I got it. Who knows? Yeah, you think you got it? Yeah. Thank you. That's my response. It's okay. It's the first time for me, so I'm trying. And yes, it does work. Okay, so if you can't reach your toe, um, maybe you'll want to sit up and do this. So, you know, maybe if you sat up uh, in a floor seated position, then maybe then you could find this. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and sit up, Kathy, and see if that helps. So there you are, cross legged, which is a good sh good shape to take. Put your hand on top of your um, toe and your where your bunion would be if you had a bunion. Right? You don't have a bunion, so it does, you, you're, so you should keep doing this. Good work. <laughs> and then press, so it's not, so 
Let me, let me, let me try to, I'm not doing very well telling Kathy what to do, so I'm going to see if I can find, I can, I can do it for myself and turn my, my screen on. Let's see here. Pin my video for a minute. I don't know whether this is going to be any better, but especially since I can't. There. So, and maybe, maybe I was doing fine and I just couldn't see Kathy properly, but let's see here. So here's my foot, here's my hand, I'm pressing up into that hand. So it's up, it's, you're not pushing down, you're pressing up into the hand. So you, what you'll find is this, this uh, muscle that comes along the side of the foot. Frida, thanks so much. I want to see if you can see. So you can also just without press, pressing, I find that if you could also tr just try to spread your toe, the big toe away from the other toes, you could try to do that without pressing. I find pressing is what actually uh, engages and educates the big toe that, that it can come out like that and also creates more strength. So I like to do something isometric with that. I don't know whether that was helpful or not. <laughs> Having Kathy do it. So let's see. Let's see. I'm going to pin So does that make sense? So it's not a push down ever. If the, so I think that it could, you can play around with it, but you could it, you know, I think isometric is a little different than Kihara resistance. And in this case, I'm just asking you to press the big toe up into your hand. And there's not a rocking, there's not a back and forth movement on it. Okay, switch to the other side, lie on your back, and switch to the other side. And because we haven't done... We haven't done the figure four on this side, or rocking figure four. So this time you're going to hold on to the right thigh, press your bent elbow, left bent elbow into your left thigh, and rock back and forth. It is, this is a rocking, this is a resistance movement, but it's not just about the right thigh, it's also about the elbow, the resistance at the, at the left elbow. So think of it as straightening the arms and then bending them. As you resist the movement that occurs while you're, while, while you're straightening and bending your arms. What you're gonna feel is some stretches on both glutes, actually both sides, different, slightly different stretches. If you want to lift your head, you'll get some core work, but uh, often that's a lot um, of work. It would also strengthen your neck at some point, but so just listen to your own body. Lift your head if you like to, and it's the edge. So if you're lifting your head, when you lift your head, your, when your knees come toward you, your head comes up and then down. Remember, you can use the strap if you need to. And then finishing that up, let's go ahead and try the other side, I mean the other big toe. So just putting your hand in, on the side of the big toe and pressing the big toe into the hand. And you can even put the other hand on that muscle that runs down along the side of the foot and see if you can find the activation that happens with your big toe press. Let's call this a big toe press. That actually I got from Dr. Fishman <laughs> in his, uh, one of his webinars recently. Let's go ahead and come to a, um, a floor seated position. I want to show you 
teach you, some of you may know it, uh, alternate nostril breathing, which is a lovely breathing pattern. And you're going to start seated and just take a couple of regular breaths. I'm going to read a script so I can't. So finding a floor seated position. Remember, you may want to sit on a brick or a blanket. Bring your right hand in front of your face and hold, fold in your ring fingers, finger and baby finger. So, and then use your right thumb to close off your right nostril. Inhale slowly through your left nostril. Pause, unless you have high blood pressure, untreated high blood pressure or glaucoma, then don't pause. And then you should close your left nostril with your left forefinger and middle finger. And exhale through the right nostril. Stay on the right side and inhale through your right nostril. Pause unless you have untreated high blood pressure or glaucoma and then use your right thumb to close off your right nostril and breathe out through your left nostril. Go ahead and inhale through your left, pause, close, exhale through your right nostril, inhale, right nostril, pause, close your right nostril, breathe out through your left, Inhale, left, pause, close left, exhale right, inhale right, pause, close right, breathe out through your left. One more round, inhale through the left nostril, pause, close the left nostril, exhale through your right nostril, inhale right nostril, and then close the right nostril, and finally Breathe out through your left nostril. How do you feel? How does that feel? You, this is a, a wonderful, it's a little complicated. Actually, you can make it a little don't worry too much about what's pre what's pressing what. It is a relax relaxing and balancing because you're switching sides of the of the body and the brain. And um, let's see here we lost Alti and I'm going to admit her again. So let's do a few shoulder things now. Also, um, actually, this is Caitlin among other. <laughs> it's for all of you, but it's for Caitlin. We're going to do three resistance. Shoulder movements, Kihara shoulder movements that we did a couple classes ago. Mm -hmm. So find your favorite floor seated position. And we're going to, the first thing is, it's called. Um, Saturday Night Fever, take your right arm up above your head straight up and put your opposite um, hand on the right, right um, wrist. 
on the back of the right wrist. You're going to pull, pull that right hand up a little bit out of the socket and then press down so that the right hand is t going to be touching the opposite knee. So you're coming down, but you're resisting the movement. This is a resistant stretch for the shoulder. And once you arrive, go ahead and drop your head towards your hands, towards your, your uh, hands and towards your uh, shoulder. And then come on back. It's a little neck stretch. And then come on up. So while you're coming up, the arm, right arm is winning, the left hand is resisting the movement. Always moving and always resisting. When you're at the top, pull your arm out of the socket a little bit just to give it more space to move. And then come down with resistance. So the top hand is winning, the bottom hand is resisting. Slowly, slowly, slowly. If you have boobs or anything else that gets in the way or you have a smaller range of motion, just come down. Don't come down all the way. Come down part of the way. Once you get to the bottom, to your range of motion, just drop your head towards your hands, towards your shoulder, towards your hands. And then you may want to drop your chin a little bit also. Get two different stretches along the neck. Come back to center with your neck. Then come back up with your arm. Arm comes up. Saturday Night Fever. Now, if you've just started doing this, you may be exhausted and you want to rest. So listen to your own body. But maybe you'll want to do a couple more before we switch sides. Let's do one more here. And stop and shake. Shake your arms, shake your shoulders. <laughs> and go ahead and to the other side. The left arm comes up to the sky. Hold on to the left wrist with the right hand. And lift uh, the, that um, arm a little bit out of the joint just to get a little more space for the movement. And then come down. So the hand, the top hand is pressing down, the bottom arm and hand, uh, wrist is resisting the movement. You're going, aiming for the opposite knee. Once you arrive, drop your head towards the hands and then come forward a little bit, chin forward. This just takes a few minutes because you really want to keep moving and then go ahead and move up. Up, 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 up. Remember you're resisting the movement. And then start over again. We'll do this a couple more times. Come on down. The arm comes across the body to the opposite side. And come on back. Oh yeah, drop your head and bring it back and then come back. And one more, everybody. You ought to be able to feel this works the, along the back of the shoulder and also the deltoid, the top of the shoulder and a little bit on the front. And come on back up. Shake you, shake it out. Shake, 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 shake. You can even bring your arms up and shake and wiggle, and because this is hard work. <laughs> and let's do elbow clams with resistance. So you're going to stay seated. You might want to switch your legs if you're in a position that's. Asymmetrical that has two sides to it. 
And then bring your hands in front of your face, palms together, interlace your fingers, bring your elbows up by your chin and keep them there. You're going to be, this is, I call it elbow clams, but you're going to be um, pressing the elbows towards each other as if, creating some isometric resistance as if there's a balloon there that you're inflating and deflating. So sit tall and press and keep your elbows up as high as your chin or higher. You can experiment with that. Press, 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 and then press out. But also feeling like there's a balloon there that's giving you a little more structure than you otherwise would have. So you're not flailing. This is a very deliberate movement. Squeezing the balloon and then letting the balloon inflate again. And actually, if you do this in your home practice, you can practice getting your elbows up higher, but not lower than your chin. The last one we're gonna do, and be sure and shake these out, shake out now, is bent elbows with a stretch. This is the one, Caitlin, I thought might be really helpful to you. Um, bring your, your right elbow in front of you, elbow bent 90 degrees. Put your hand, other hand on the elbow, that's the resistance part. And then take it out. So while you're resisting, the hand that's holding on to your elbow is resisting the movement. Take the, um, the elbow out to the outside, as far as you can go, and then bring it back. So this time, uh, the hand that's holding on is, res is winning, and you wanna bring it back and all the way in front of your chest as far as you can get it, and then back and forth you go, resisting the movement all the time. You're always moving and always resisting, and sometimes the hand is winning, and sometimes the elbow is winning. And take it all the way out as far as you can go, and then all the way back across your body as far as you can go. And just do this a couple more times. You may be already exhausted. And then switch sides. Sw uh, shake and switch. Shake and switch. So bring it across, so you can actually bring it across, and then back, resisting, 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 as far out as you can come, and then bring it back again. So remember, when the arm is winning, the elbow is resisting the movement. When the elbow is winning, the arm is resisting the movement or the hand. Back and forth you go. And finish up. And shake it out. Let's do seated, um, this is just a bonus, because I just, uh, we already did three. Seated flying pizza. Uh, so from your floor seated position, bring your elbows to your, bent elbows to your waist, palms facing towards each other to start, and then bring your arms out, the forearms only, keeping the tuck, forms out, and then palm up and then come back. So when you're seated like this, you can do this both arms. So notice when you start, your palms are facing each other. When you go to the outside position, the palms facing the ceiling. So there's, this is a wrist exercise also. 
You should feel this in the back of the shoulders. This is great for rotator cuff. Prevention and cure, actually, for rotator cuff injuries. One more. And then go ahead and shake it out. We're going to do a spine twist. So bring your hand, put your hands into prayer pose and tuck the fingers under the chin. We're going to do the simplest spine, thoracic spine twist there is, just so that we can train the body to move properly uh, in this rotation. So just take your rib cage and move it to the right. So this, the thoracic spine is twisting to the right. Come back to center. Rotate to the left. The, the, the rib cage moves to the left, but it's a rotation also. And come on back. The reason your hands are tucked under your chin is to keep your face from moving or your head from moving. It's, you're not rotating that. All you're doing is isolating the rotation on the cervical spine. And then when you're done with that, let's go ahead and do a side bend. So see a seated side bend. Just drop on the right, just drop your uh, whole right side, bend it to the right. You may want to put your left hand on your rib cage, like a little teapot. So one side of the thoracic spine is crunching or, and the other is expanding. One is contracting, compressing, and the other is, is uh, expanding. And then just come slowly back up to center and switch sides. Just drop down, keep your hips on the floor. You can make a little teapot if you want with your right arm. Just know that one side of the thoracic spine is compressing the, the side bending side and the other side is opening up. We need both actually. And come on back. And come onto your hands and your feet. For bird dog, I've become quite fond of this pose <laughs> because it does so many things. It's core work, it's balancing work, it's cross patterning. So while you're on your hands and your feet, take your right hand forward and your left hand back, left leg back, sorry. <laughs> right arm, left leg. Try to keep the hips even. If, if this is hard for you to do, just do the arm and then take, bring it down and do the leg. That would be an adapt, a modification. And then take some breaths and then come on back down, switch sides. You should feel the core working here. This is obviously a balancing exercise. Uh, and you, you and it's a cross patterning. So it does a lot of things in one movement. Try to think about your hips and be sure, or try to get them even. So if the leg that's lifted, the hip is higher, just drop it down a little bit. And come on back and do the other side. And come on back. Let's come down to our stomach for back extension. So on the belly, prone. On the prone, back extension, uh, which is, and I'm gonna add an option for people who don't, but you don't have to do it uh, 
if you're just be, if you're just starting to do this pose. I think Kathy is ready for it though. We're, we're going to bring the arms, the third movement after airplane, we're going to bring the arms forward by the ears, palms facing each other. Okay, so from here, your arms are by your side, palms up. Take an inhale to prepare, and then exhale, lift your chest, your hands, your head, Stay here and take some breaths. Maybe try to get a little higher, maybe. And then inhale to prepare and exhale to return. That's the basic move. And you may want to stay there. But now we're going to add on. So we're going to do the basic move and then airplane. So take an inhale to prepare and exhale. The arms come up, the chest, the head. Stay here and take a breath. And then inhale to prepare and exhale. Bring your arms out in an airplane, palms facing the floor. See if you can get a little higher. Inhale and exhale. Inhale to prepare, we're gonna add on. And exhale, the arms come up by the ears, palms facing each other. Yes. And see if you can get a little higher. But remember, you don't need to do this one. This is called Superman. Uh, and inhale, and then everything comes back down. You don't need to do the third one. Just do, the, do one, two, or three. One, two, one or two instead of three. We're going to do one more. Inhale to prepare. And exhale, lift, arms, chest, head. Stay here, get a little higher if you can. Inhale to prepare and exhale, arms out into airplane. Stay here, inhale and exhale. And inhale to prepare and exhale, Superman, Superwoman. This is going to be the hardest. And Kathy will get better at this. You'll, you can, you'll be able to watch this. Take an inhale and then exhale, everything comes down. Bring your arms out into a T. We're going to do a thoracic stretch. But the, the main, the name of this game is to keep your arms and your shoulders on the floor while you're moving one of your legs. So looking to the left, Kathy's going to take her left leg, lift it up a little bit and hover it and bring it over the back of her right leg. The hips will move, the shoulders and the arms stay pinned to the floor and even. And just stay here. This starts to relieve tightness in the upper back. Come on back. Other side, look to the other side. And take your right leg up and over. Take some breaths here. This movement may be very small in the beginning, very small. You may be not, un, not even noticeable, but as you get, as you repeat it, uh, your back starts to loosen up, which, by the way, is another way to um, alleviate lower back pain, because some, of lo some lower back pain, go ahead and do this uh, again, right and, uh, left and right. Lower back pain sometimes occurs because the upper back isn't doing its job. So we're trying to help the upper back do a better job of what it's supposed to be doing with this mobility stretch. And finish up and come up to standing with your half round, if you have a half round. If you don't have a half round, a book or a, a yoga block will do. We're going to do a, a three-way ankle stretch. We're on the home stretch. This is the last triplet. We're going to do some balancing. We're going to do the three-way ankle stretch and then finish up. 
So find your half round or something. Do you have a half round, Parvin? Yes, I do. Good. So um, all you do is put, put your right foot, the front of the foot on the half round and the heel drops to the floor. And then just start to flex your ankle while your foot is in, on, the, on the round. So just forward flexion, forward, straight forward. We're going to change that in a minute, but straight forward about four to six times. So remember that if, if a knee, the knee moves because the ankle is moving. So, and if you, your knee hurts in this position, you've gone too far for you. So it's, it can be a small movement. Just flex and flex and flex a repetitive movement four to six to 12 times. But I'm, I'm gonna say six today, but at home, 12 maybe. And then, then you start to um, flex to the inside. So it's still a forward flexion, but you're going to the inside of your foot. This is the best movement I know of to start to increase your ankle flexibility and your ankle strength. Inside flexion, let's call it. Four to six times. And then obviously, to be predicted, outside flexion. So same foot, same ankle. The flexion is a little bit towards the outside. This is probably the smallest flexion that you're going to find for most people. I put, I have um, three half rounds and I put one in front of my sink and one of front in my kitchen and one in front of my food prep area and then one in my bathroom. So I'm always stretching the ankles and the calves. Go ahead and switch to the other side, please. Left foot, forefoot on the half round, heel on the floor, heel directly behind the front of the foot. And then go ahead and flex your ankle forward, forward, Forward flexion. I have problem with my left ankle. Well, now this is, for you, you might want to be sure you're holding on to something then and make your movements very small. Don't, 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 this will help your ankle unless you're doing too much. So none of these movements should bring you into pain. So inside, so forward, then inside, and now to the outside. And then finish up. We're gonna do balancing, and then I think, I'm running a little behind, we're running a little late, I hope, hope that's okay with you, because I, I would like to finish this up, because I'd love to, to have a little bit of balancing in every class. So what I want you to do is stand in good posture. And then lift, lift your bent right knee up. So you should be, oh shoot, you should be standing near something that you can hold on to if you need to, or touch at least. So what I'm going to do, and maybe I'll, I'll save the, the bonus for the next time I do balancing. Just go ahead and bring your foot up and see if you can hold it, your knee and your foot up, and see if you can hold it for a little bit, and then switch sides. Dana, I got an email from Dana. She's couldn't come, but she's going to listen to the video later. Go ahead and switch sides. So you could up the ante here by just timing yourself, but next week or the next time we do balancing, I'll show you another way to progress this balancing.
and one more on each side. Another way to progress it, by the way, is to close your eyes. But I'm not asking you to do that because <laughs> we're already running out of time. Well, no add-ons add <laughs> for this. Okay, let's stop there. Finish up what you're doing, which side, whatever side you're on, whatever set you're on. And then from a standing position, I just want you to bring your arms up into a, a V and say to yourself, <clears throat> I have things to give. I'm going to unmute you all. I have things to give. And then hug yourself, things to receive. So I have things to give and things to receive. I don't hear you, but that's okay. Things to give and things to receive. Give and give. Big hug. Okay, everyone find a way onto the floor. We're going to do the Yoga Nidra um, closing meditation, 61 point guided net meditation. I am going to ask you to pay attention to specific body parts, but not to move them. Just pay attention. This is a practice, a meditation practice called Yoga Nidra. The reason I repeat it, um, I won't say I do always do it, but um, I do it a lot of, most of the time I do it, um, is because repetition is supposed to make it more effective. Lie on the floor with your legs extended or your knees bent. Be comfort become comfortable. And start to notice your breath. You may want to put a small washcloth over your eyes or a blanket over your body, depending on where you are. Weatherwise. Bring your awareness to the center of your eyebrows center of your throat, right shoulder, elbow, wrist, right thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, right wrist, elbow, right shoulder, center of your throat, left shoulder, elbow, wrist, left thumb, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, fifth finger, left wrist, left elbow, shoulder, center of your throat, spiritual heart center, right side of your chest, heart center, left side of your chest, heart center, navel center, center of the pelvis, right hip, right knee, right ankle, right big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, right ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, left hip, left knee, ankle, left big toe, second toe, third toe, fourth toe, fifth toe, left ankle, knee, hip, center of your pelvis, navel center, heart center, center of your throat, center of your eyebrows. This completes our 61-point guided meditation. Bless you.
Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's start to wiggle and stretch. You can extend your legs and your arms overhead and just stretch in both directions and try to create um, a little bit of space between your pelvis and your rib cage. And wiggle and stretch and fingers and toes and right and left. And then right, hug your right knee and then your left to your chest. And then rock side to side. Roll towards me. I don't know if that's a good cue or not. Into a fetal position. <laughs> Diane insists on being upright for now. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and then. Do you want me to lay on the ground? <laughs> no, no, you don't have to. You don't have to. If you're on the ground, come up from the ground, please. Find a position. Bring your hands to your heart. Press your fingers together. There are proprioceptors on the bottom of your palms as well as the bottom of your feet. And then glide, C1 glide over the over C1. Skull glides over C1, drops. We're bowing to each other, nodding, bowing to each other. We're gonna close the class by saying to each other, namaste. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much, good class. <laughs> Stop the recording, but you can ha stay on and answer questions, ask questions, make comments, or